Blessed be everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about how to boost your magic, boost your spells, get better results. But before we do, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com, author of Crafting a Wiccan Path. And if you want to learn more about Wicca and Witchcraft, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. And if you want to get better with your spell casting, be a little bit more uh, strategic, more thoughtful so that you do get better results, have a look at my free PDF. The Spellcaster Checklist. It gives you a guide as to what to think about when you are planning your spells. The link is in the description field below this video. People are always looking for ways to enhance their magic, ways to have more success with spell casting because magic's pretty much a hit or miss. Sometimes you hit your target, other times you miss completely. Sometimes it works miraculously almost and other times it works in a very boring fashion and other times it just doesn't work the way you wanted it to work at all. And it's hard to know sometimes what's gone amiss, why it's not working. So how do you boost your spells? Well, it's not so much about boosting them. It's more about being a realistic about what it is you're trying to do magic for and just having a little bit more of an understanding of yourself and how magic appears to work anyway. Magic seems to just pop up. It's, it's kind of like um, you don't really know how it's going to work because it's going to come almost at, as a path of least resistance. And so the results that you get can come from places you just didn't think you'd get them from. And things can happen that you just didn't expect would happen. So that's one of the reasons why we say don't, when you're doing your magic, don't spell for how you're going to get what it is you want, just spell for what it is that you're wanting to create. So I've got about six important aspects to talk about. So have a listen to these and see whether any of these resonate with you, whether these are things that you can improve on in your magic. So the first one is the Spellcaster Checklist that I was talking about before. It does give you a guide as to how you can prepare for successful spell casting, particularly with spell casting that may have more long-term results or may be a little bit more difficult for you to attain. It could be a bigger project that you're wanting. Some spells are going to work easier than others. Uh, the, the more something is within your sphere of availability, the, the easier and quicker you're going to get results. So you may not necessarily need to plan anything for really short, quick spells. But for anything where you're trying to aim for something that in, in reality could make you take a bit of effort from an action point of view, then you want to be a little bit more thoughtful about your spell work. So what the Spellcaster Checklist does is it just helps you to get clear on what your aim is for a start with your spell. What is it you're actually wanting to achieve from this? What steps and stages do you have to go through uh, in order to achieve this, even on a mundane level? You know, uh, is this goal that you're aiming for a goal that can be divided up into smaller goals? Is this goal something you could address from different angles? Uh, there may be stages that you have to go through in, in order to get to your end results. So what are those stages? And then do your magic for each one of those stages or different aspects to, to something, particularly if you're going for a job or if you're building a business, there's lots of different angles you can take with the magic, uh, particularly with, with business, for example, or even study. Uh, there's different angles you can take. So what different sorts of spells can you do for each one of those, those angles? For example, with business, you may have marketing angle, you may have a customer angle, you may want a different premises. Uh, there's lots of different things that you need to make up a business, so you may need to do spells for each and every one of those. What are your expectations? We talk about that. Uh, what do you expect is going to happen? Because often money, money, magic, particularly money magic, uh, will, it will totally defy your expectations. You won't you will, you'll be expecting something and something else will happen. <laughs> so what are your expectations? Get clear on those. When it comes to your magic, what obstacles are there in your path in the physical world? Do you, it, do you need to do a obstacle removal spell first? Is that where you need to start? 
so that you don't have those obstacles and are there going to be obstacles along the way that you're going to need to also do spells for and then of course what sort of spell are you going to do. So that's what the checklist takes care of and that's the first thing I'd recommend if you haven't already downloaded it, do download it. It's free and it just gives you some, some things to ask yourself about your spell casting. The second thing is to make sure that what you're spelling for is actually something you really want to manifest. If you don't really want it, then you're not going to put the energy into it. You're, you're not really sending the message out there to, to the gods, to the spirits or to the magic that you really want this thing to happen if you're very blasé about it. So is it something you, you really want to, to manifest? If you're wanting a relationship uh, then, and you're focusing on a particular thing, is that the thing that you really want or is it something else that you're really wanting but you only think that you should want that? When it comes to a job, is it a job you really want or is it only a job that you think you should have? What is, what is it that you really, really, really want? Particularly when it comes to money magic, a lot of money magic isn't the money itself that you want, it is what the money can give you that you want. So maybe it's better to actually do the spell for what it is that you want, you know, the object or the holiday or whatever it is you're wanting to build the money for. If you're wanting to build uh, wealth, why are you wanting to build wealth? Why are you wanting to build a nest egg? What's that for? Well, it's usually for safety, security, feeling like you have whatever it is that you need and you want without you, you know, having to worry about it or, or scrounge around looking for it. So look for what you really, truly, truly want and why you want it. Knowing why you want something is really important for successful magic. Why do I want it? Do I want it because I want it? Or do I want it because other people are telling me I should want it? Or, you know, to be a certain person, I have to, I have to want these things. Or to satisfy my family position, I have to want these things. What is it that you really want? Because if you're not really wanting it, uh, you may not necessarily get that. You're more likely to get what you're actually unconsciously focusing on. The, th the third thing is use links in your magic if you're struggling with getting anything done. Sometimes you do need to actually link the magic to a thing. So if you're going for a job with a particular business, make sure you've got a business card or a logo or something physical that connects you to that business, like it's a link, it's a go-between between you and the business. If you're trying to influence um, a, an authority of some sort, um, maybe you're, you're wanting to influence an outcome for something and it's um, maybe an educational institution, make sure that you've got some physical connection to that institution like the, the logo or something that they have. Uh, if you're doing a healing for somebody, for example, then make sure you've got a link to that person, a physical link to that person, like something that that person owns that they have worn for quite some time so it has their energy and even their DNA on it. That will help you link your magic. So that's sometimes you may have to go to that extent with some magic to actually make that physical connection so the, the magic has a physical channel to, to move through. Number four, enjoy your spell work. Have fun with it. It's, it's meant to be enjoyable. And when you're bringing joy and fun into this, like when you sit down, you focus on what it is that you're spelling for, you may state, now I am doing a spell for such and such. You have your materials there. Maybe you've got your sigil, maybe you've got your candles. You might have your oils, herbs, whatever it is that you're using for your spell casting and just enjoy the pleasure of these tools. Enjoy the beauty of the candle. Enjoy the scents of the herbs and the oils. Enjoy creating the sigil. Enjoy writing the petition. When the, if you're burning a petition, enjoy watching the, the flame and, and seeing that it's going out into the world. Really try and see the beauty in what it is that you're doing with your spell casting see beauty in it, feel the beauty in it, and that will help boost the energy because it boosts your emotional connection to what it is that you're doing, and that's really important. Number five, let go of all attachments to the outcome, which is probably the most more difficult 
the most difficult aspect of spell casting, letting go of what uh, Alistair Crowley called the lust for the result. <laughs> We have to let go of attachment and that's, a, that's where the surrender comes in and I've spoken about surrender on um, recent videos that once you've done the spell you've got to let it go and that means surrendering to how it's going to all pan out and try not to think about it so once you do your spell try to emotionally put yourself into an emotional state of it having already manifested and then get on with doing something that's completely non-magical. Uh, go mow the lawn or do the dishes or, or go and study or do whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, and get your mind off the spell. Because when you're attached to the spell, that's when all the doubt starts coming in. And that can block the energy. Because it can also, the doubt can also be sending mixed signals out there to the universe as well because the doubt on one hand is saying I don't believe this can manifest which is kind of like a not manifesting and yet you've done a spell to manifest something and they can get in conflict with each other energetically. And the last one is offerings, giving offerings to the local spirits where you live and perform uh, any of your magic, uh, giving offerings to the gods and the, the deities that you may be working with in your magic. And depending on the deity or the spirit uh, will determine the type of offering. It's a gratitude, it's a way of giving in order to receive. Magic is about energy and energy is all about ebbing and flowing, rising and falling, waxing and waning, giving and receiving. And if we're asking for things all the time, which is, you know, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And we're not letting out and going, you know, I give, 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 give to, you've got to give and receive, give and receive, give and receive. So if you're wanting something and it's really difficult for you to manifest it, what are you holding back on in regards to your giving? <laughs> Because if you've got a, a scarcity mentality where you're afraid to give because you're worried that you don't have enough to give or that you've got a, a spiritual attachment to a belief that you shouldn't have to uh, give something in order to receive something back, then you're going to be blocking that energy of giving and receiving. Uh, because if you're asking a deity or a spirit to help you out, then you know, you've got to show some gratitude, you've got, to, you've got to give them something. And so the, the thing that you give them as an offering is an energy, it's, it's energetic and you're, you're working energetically with them. And so that offering is just a way of giving some energy back for what it is that you're asking them to help you with. So definitely do your offerings. Some people will do offerings straight after a spell for most, for, for most deities, uh, that's what I do. Other people work, particularly if they're working uh, more high magic or ceremonial magic, won't actually give the offerings till after the magic has been completed. I like to pay it forward. <laughs> so I like to thank uh, the, the deities uh, for working, for helping me uh, just as I'm completing the spell. Have a think about each of those and download the Spellcaster checklist, read through it, Think, is my spell something I really need to be thinking a little bit more about or is it something that's pretty easy to manifest or is it something very small that could easily manifest without me having to think too much about it? Uh, discern that and then go ahead and do your planning, do your connecting to yourself and your desire of, of what it is and why you're wanting it just to help you connect energetically more to it. Because magic really is about energy and it's about you connecting to what it is that you want, your connection to, to spirit and how much you can feel in the position of already having what it is. So it's a feeling thing. So feel into the magic and enjoy it on a feeling emotional level first so that, that it can then manifest in a physical way for you. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com, blessed be. Mm -hmm.